What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J. We are locked in. This is episode four of the Underground Railroad. And when I tell you guys, I'm working my tail off to get these out to you. I am working. I'm in my master's program right now, but this show has me hooked. And I'm not trying to binge it because I want something to last me. I want something to last. But this is episode four. And I know y'all don't care about my personal life. So shout out to the notification gang. You guys always been there. If you're new to the channel, you want to be a part of this, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Hit that like button. It's the easiest thing you can do. Now, this is episode four. This episode focuses primarily on Ridgeway. Now, if you guys are kind of losing who people are, Ridgeway is the Negro hunter that has little Homer with him. So this is really going to be a detailed version of his backstory, how he got to the way he is today. So I'm not going to hold you up anymore. This is episode four, the Underground Railroad. We start the episode off with young Ridgeway. I won't say young, young. He's mid-teenagers, probably 16, 17. But he's going to the gravesite of his mom, Emma Ridgeway. Now, him and his father are the only ones alive. And he's talking to his mom because it seems like he had a closer relationship with her. He starts talking about when he was younger and he got hurt. And the first time he ever seen his own blood was when he fell onto a rake. Now, you can tell that his connection with his mom is very strong because he's reminiscing about a lot of things, probably things that he can't connect with his father because his father is hard at work. This house isn't small that they live in. So <clears throat> you see this all the time where most kids, me included, my dad was working hard. So I always had a stronger connection with my mom. Not saying I'm a mama's boy, but I was able to talk to my mom about life. As far as when I was with my dad, I had to talk to him about sports, school, and work. You see what I'm saying? Just like I was saying, we see Ridgeway Sr. looking out the window and he sees his son coming from the grave, the burial site that they have on their land. Now, fathers and son, just like my dad, my dad's from Virginia. So now that I'm older, I understand why he was like that, why he was so hard on us and was pushing us. Because I'm an adult now and I'm looking like, okay, he was molding us to be a man and putting us in a situation to not really have to worry about things, be able to handle things on our own. But also you can see there's a disconnect because he wants to be close with his son, but he has to make sure that his son is focused because with the mom being gone and there's no other siblings, the brother, I mean, not the brother, Ridgeway is going to have to take over this property and the dad just wants him to be prepared to do this. And the thing about it is older generations, they didn't know that technology and stuff was going to be like that as far as in our time. So in their times, all he knows is we need to work to keep this property and this land together. You know what I'm saying? So that's why he pushes his son so hard to be like him because he's leaving everything for him. Over here on the Ridgeway property, everybody is free. All these black people we see, they're free. So they have free time. They're able to do whatever they want to do. They have jobs because they're hired by Ridgeway Senior. Ridgeway Senior sees things a little bit differently. And we see Ridgeway, the bounty hunter, sitting on the porch and he doesn't really understand what's going on here. He doesn't like what's going on. And the reason he feels like this, because everyone in town, they all look at blacks as slaves and that's it. They're not equal. So when Ridgeway Jr. goes into town, everyone's like, oh, Ridgeway Sr., man, that dude's delusional. He's hiring Negroes, free slaves. Pfft. We would never do that. So for Ridgeway Jr., everyone's making fun of him because what his father's doing. But his father sees people as people. So he's hiring them and he's letting them live on his land. They get jobs and they work as regular people. Now, all the blacks that work for Ridgeway, they're free. So they have a lady in the house that cooks, she cleans, she does all that. But she's free and she's getting paid for it. It's her job. Now, we already know that Ridgeway Jr., he's kind of ashamed of his father for hiring free blacks. Now, his dad is really big into the church and he's saying, you'll feel the spirit in you. And the spirit is what's going to tell you that, hey, these black men, you have to look at them as men. Same as the women. They are women. They are humans. So they're, they're equal to us. And Ridgeway saying, what if I don't feel that spirit within me? And his dad's telling him, you can't see the spirit, but you'll feel it. So he's trying to convince his son that, hey, we got to treat these people as equal. And that's why I'm hiring them. But Ridgeway Jr. doesn't think that he's going to ever feel this. As I was saying earlier, we know that Ridgeway Sr. is trying to leave all of this land for his son. So what they're doing in here, they're making links. And when they make these links, you got to put them in a the fire and then you got to straighten them out. So what Ridgeway Jr. is doing, he's the guy with the big blowing fan. You got to keep pulling it because you got to keep that wind coming on the fire, which is going to give it the oxygen to keep it hot. So Ridgeway Sr., he tells him, come over here. He's trying to show his son, hey, this is how we can relate. Come over here and do these links. And one of the black gentlemen, he's like, hey, my son's old enough. He can do the fan. Young boy over here, he doing the fan. 
hey, you just got your promotion, kid. His son gets over there and he does the links. But when he does the links and he's trying to, you know, even them out, two of the links actually fall. Now, Ridgeway Sr. doesn't get mad. He said, there you go. You're learning. You're practicing. But since he messed up in front of his father, he gets mad and he runs off. He actually bumps into the little kid that took his job on the fan because he was like, man, I could do the fan. Now the kid's looking good doing the fan. He's black and I'm over here messing up. A white person messing up in front of black people. So Ridgeway Jr., <laughs> he storms off. And this is the beginning of us seeing why Ridgeway chases blacks now. Ridgeway Sr., he goes down the hall later on at night because he wants to talk to his son. But when he gets there, he decides to not knock. And the only thing I can think of is let my son have some space okay he had a rough day today he thought that he messed up and i felt bad but little does he know that this is a learning experience i'd rather him mess up now so when he becomes older he'll know how to do it so he actually doesn't go in there and he lets his son have the night to himself ridgeway goes out in the woods the next day and he just walking around clearing his mind now you remember the kid that took his job on the fan blower well he sees him out on the well and he goes over there and asks him what's he doing and he's like well mr arnold nothing sir and he has a thing of matches and what he's doing is he's playing with these matches and he's throwing them down in the well talking about i can't see the spirit it, the match doesn't stay lit when it gets all the way down there now ridgeway this is where things really start to turn for him he tells the kid, this is dangerous playing with fire. You don't start a fire anywhere. You never want to catch anything on fire. And the kid say, I'm not doing that. I told you I'm just dropping them down here to see if I see the spirit. Now, Ridgeway, he starts to change up. We already see he has a certain type of feeling towards black people. So he tells the kid, the match isn't going to stay lit unless you go with it. And the kid is saying, what, what do you mean by that? And what he's saying is you need to go down there with the match if you want to say it if you want to see it lit all the way down to the bottom and the kid the kid doesn't know any better so what does it do it thinks the spirit is going to be down there he lights a match and he actually jumps down in the well and it ends up bad for him you just hear ah! but the kid he just goes down there he breaks his leg he's still alive and he's looking up like dang ridgeway what the hell's wrong with you but they take him back home and they actually put him in a cast Man, you know, this kid looking at him like, man, I ain't never listening to Arnold no more. Ridgeway Sr., they see what happened, and he treats everybody as equal. So once he gets back, he puts him in the cast, like I said, and he tells him, don't worry about it. You'll feel the spirit. And the kid's like, yes, sir, I will. Because for him, he's just looking at it as a, it's a kid playing around. He did something bad. He doesn't know that it was his actual son that told him to jump down there. But he kind of figures it out, and he tells Arnold, I'm going to talk to you directly because what he's doing like I'm hiring these black men, their families to work for us. These people work for us to keep food on our table. We pay them, they work for us and you're messing it all up. For Ridgeway Senior, this hurts. This is my son, this is the only thing I have left. My wife is dead. So he goes and actually talks to her tombstone and her burial site and he's saying, I don't know who raised them. You know, it, it feels like he's more connected with you and I'm trying to raise him, but I can't teach him what you were supposed to teach him, you know, because I was always working. I was always out here. You were raising him and he was following after you. But now that you're gone, there's a disconnect with me because you were pretty much the liaison between me and my son. So it, it hurts because this is his son and his wife is gone and it's really all on him. Ridgeway goes on in the town. Now he goes into it and he sees a suit. He's like, okay, this suit is nice. Cause we know the Ridgeway of current day, he's always clean him and Homer, but he's in here and he gets a suit. He looks at it like, yeah, this is the one I want. He takes it to the register and the man says, uh, how you gonna pay for this? He's like, put it on my dad's credit. He said, oh no, no. You wanna put it on your daddy's credit? Bring your daddy in here. So Ridgeway, he's kind of upset like, dang. <sighs> what I got to do to get some money on my own? Cause my dad ain't gonna give me money for a suit. When he comes outside, he sees a random man walking around. It looks like he has a wanted poster in his hand. So Ridgeway is looking and the dude mean mugs him. And they looking at each other and Ridgeway's like, I gotta figure out what this guy's doing. I never seen him in town. Turns out this gentleman is a bounty hunter. He has two of his constituents with him. And they're in here over a nice cold whiskey. Probably ain't cold, probably dry, hot as hell. But they ain't here talking about it. We're going to find this nigga. We're going to wait for him to come to us. Little do they know, he ain't going to come to y'all. Ridgeway follows him in here. And when he sits down, the other two dudes like, hey, man, who are you? He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a patch 
of woods that's real, real thick up on these people's yard. Now, if you guys let me go with you, cut me in, give me a little bit of money, I'll show you exactly where it is. Now, the head guy's like, all right, cool, because there's enough money to go around. Everybody else is like, oh, man, we don't want to cut this kid in. He don't know what he's talking about because greed, you know, they like, well, we don't want to split it between four people. But this must be a big enough bounty because the head guy says it's enough treasures for all of us. We can we can cut this kid in. Ridgeway is slowly becoming a hustler. Now, he actually takes them out to the woods. Now, it's four of them. So four people is going to be able to cover way more land than what just the three of them would have. Now, they're all out here and they're looking around trying to find where this runaway is. Ridgeway ends up finding them. Turns out this man has a young baby with him, an infant with him. Ridgeway picks up a stick and you already know it's about to go bad. But what he does let him do is take his coat off and cover the baby up. And then Ridgeway knocks out the slave and he yells, hey, I got him over here. Over here. I got him. Oh, man, this is the beginning of the end of Ridgeway. They capture the slave, the head bounty hunter. He's like, oh, thank you, man. You know, they're definitely about to cut him in now. But now Ridgeway is holding the baby. He wants to know, what are you going to do with this this child? The head guy says, oh, we're going to show him off like we're going to do this runaway. Now, everybody in this town is free, so he must have came from a different city or a little different town. And Ridgeway's thinking, y'all going to take this baby and do what with him? He gives Ridgeway the money, and it looks like it may be $2 pieces. You know, back then, a dollar went up. <laughs> a dollar was like a hundred. you know what I'm saying? You balling. He got two of them, so, oh, man, he might as well buy the town. What's the first thing Ridgeway does with his newfound fortune? We go back into town. Where's that suit at? Matter of fact, I want the suit with the hat. Give me both. Matter of fact, give my dad something too. You know what I'm saying? Ridgeway got some money in his pocket, got a new outfit. He goes home and he starts talking to his dad. And his dad's just asking him, how do you feel about things? And Ridgeway's saying, how about we get us some slaves and get rid of all these people we're paying? We can get more work out of them and pay less. And that way the family will make more money. Now, Ridgeway Sr., he's like, nah, that's not how our family is. We like all of the people that work with us. We have a cook in here. She cooks, she cleans. How can you eat her food if you don't respect her? And he's like, oh, forget all that. But he's trying to convince his dad, look, we can make more money having slaves. We can keep all the money. And that's the way we should. But the dad, he's just not having that. The whole time the cook, she's listening to it. She has dessert. And you can hear Ridgeway saying they should be enslaved. They should be slaved, enslaved and then changed. So she's stalling. She's like, oh, man, this kid, I knew he was going to be up to no good. <laughs> Senior, he was good. But this son, I knew he was going to be up to no good. But she comes in and Ridgeway Jr. asked her the toughest question you can ask a free black person. Do you think black people should be slaves? Now, of course, she wants to say no. But she has she knows that Ridgeway Jr. is potentially about to take this over. And I keep telling you guys in every episode is survival. So, of course, she's going to agree with Junior, because if not, he's going to start treating her differently. And you don't want that. You don't want a tough time. You remember Ridgeway, he got a couple outfits, one for himself and he got one for his dad. What's he what the reason he got one for his dad is because he wants to show his dad. I'm capable of making money outside of what you wanted to do, making links and all of this stuff inside, the you know, our little barn. And he's trying to show his dad that, hey, you can respect me. Now, it's not that his dad doesn't respect him. His dad is trying to teach him the right way. This is the way the good book wants us to do it. Everybody is equal. Treat everybody equally. Hired him, give them a job, giving them an opportunity. But Ridgeway Jr., he doesn't look at it that way. He takes the suit out to his dad and he's showing his dad, hey, look, dad, you know, I got you a new suit. It's got silver buttons on it. I got it all with my own money. Now, his dad, he's still working because he doesn't care about that. All the fancy clothes, it doesn't matter. He's good with what he has. Right now, he has a house. He has people working with him. He's good. Money's good. Life is good. Now, Ridgeway Jr., he feels kind of disrespected, like, Dad, I worked this hard, but he bought this with blood money, so the dad's not going to accept it because you got it for hunting black people. That's how you got this money for this outfit, and the father doesn't accept it. And this was the last night that we can assume that the Ridgeway family actually spoke to each other. The dad said, I don't want none of that stuff. That's blood money, pretty much. And Ridgeway, he just leaves it and he walks off into the dark. And this is the beginning of the Ridgeway that we know in all of the other episodes. Man, man, man. 
There you go, episode four of the Underground Railroad. Now, I have a lot of respect for Ridgeway Sr. and what he did. Now, there are a lot of good white folk out there, but there are a lot of bad white folk too. And I think the bad outweighs the good in most parts, especially in them Southern states. But that's neither here or there. What do you think was the turning point for Ridgeway Jr. for him to say, you know what? Forget all this. We need to make black slaves. Let me know what y'all think below. I'm Modi J. If you like the content on the channel, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. We're on the road to 6,000 subscribers. Make sure you tune in for episode 5 the Underground Railroad. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.